Hi, I'm in the studio with Stephen Andrews in Toronto, who has been using this time um, of social isolation a way that he like usually does, which is being in the studio by himself and, and making paintings. But there's a new uh, bunch of work here that he's been that he's been making that I just caught a glimpse of for the first time a second ago and thought we need to to tell people about these beautiful things he's making. They're right behind you, Stephen. Can you tell us, first of all, hi. And uh, can you tell us Hi. a little bit about these pictures that you're, uh, that you're up to these days? Well, you caught me at the very beginning of a series. So oftentimes I don't really know what I'm doing. That's always the best way to start things because yeah. you kind of learn as you go. And these are a pretty steep learning curve because of the intricacies of them. I had done a bunch of star paintings about 10 years ago, but they were produced out of a, they were random and produced out of a particular process. So they weren't actually star maps. If you were an astronomer, you could actually read these things because they are these actual new, charts. These new works you can read as these actual new works are actual oh. charts. They're, they're not random, they're based on uh, photographs of the Torrens Barrens Dark Sky Preserve uh, north of Toronto, and they're uh, basically of the Milky Way. And how did you come to find out about it? It's so funny. You, you realize as you get older as an artist, you really only have one or two ideas. <laughs> and, you know, one of my ideas is looking at the heavens. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's born out of this idea of trying to make pictures of <laughs> something that people want to stare at for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know how you can like look at the sky and just gaze and gaze and gaze and never get tired of it. So okay. I think oh, it would be nice to take uh, you know pictures of the sky and then render them in paint. So mm -hmm. you've got this thing that you want to look at or you are predisposed to look at a painting and then of a subject matter that you tend to stare at you know, for a long time. And because there's patterns that appear, I'm interested in pareidolia, which is the mind's willingness to see forms and shapes and things in the sky and, or in anything in particular. So I thought, you know, the astronomers and astrologists from the past have seen, you know, lions and scales and fish and virgins. You know, <laughs> kind of an aid memoir so that they can navigate the seas or you know find reasons for their misfortune mm -hmm. and so my interest in astrology my interest in astronomy mm -hmm. these things are kind of brought to bear um i'm a huge fan of uh vija salman's yeah her work with the stars and so it, it had sort of come out of this portrait work that I've been doing. I've been making large scale mosaics for a really long time. And I have been working with digital imagery since the late eighties. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, another one of my ideas is that the world comes to us through these mediations, these filters. Mm -hmm. So here's just another iteration of that. Mm -hmm. You know, in this particular moment in time, it's great to have something really meditative to do. Yes. So it's like every one of these squares is a different color. So I'm mixing all of these colors. Like I'm looking at my source material and then I'm, you know, going, okay, what color is that? And then mixing it. Yeah. Up all yeah. The what, how did you get access to the photographs that are the basis for these? Um, well, I'm working on one of mine right now, and this uh -huh. is like, I learned how to take photographs with an iPhone, uh, but the others are, uh, public domain stuff. And can I ask you, Stephen, can you stand up and get one of those paintings and bring it close to us so we can see how the surface is, um, how the surface is built up? Because it, it looks almost like photographic from a distance, but when you get close up to it, you can see, sorry to put you to work here. You can see, oh, that's perfect, because you can see the light raking on it. It's really this kind of digital confetti. Is it? With a uh, lot of, 
with a lot of color in it. You were saying before we started that there's no, it's not really, these are not black paintings. There's not black in it. No. There are, I mean, generally speaking, like four or five different kinds of blue. Yeah. And, and then these kind of mauves and, and the paints. Black and just as a tone. Yeah. That's fabulous. Thank you. And the, the, uh, the pleasure of sort of just, you know, meditating in a day like, yeah. day like this is pretty, pretty interesting. I'm just going to get something else to show you. Great. <laughs> yeah. Well, how long have you been making these for? Uh, well, these take a while to do. So that one took like a month. Hmm. This one that's a little faster, it took three weeks. Did you start the series when the lockdown began or were you already working on these? Um, I started them as soon as I got back from Montreal. So just as the lockdown yeah, was starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, interestingly, I was doing kind of similar work with dot matrices yes. um, at the time of 9-11. Uh, so Sorry. again, it's very kind of methodical painstaking work that almost like like knitting or something where you just have to keep your mind on what you're doing and it, it kind of cleans everything else away right it's yeah they have a bit of the tibetan sand painting in them so yeah. there's something you learned by this task yeah um i mean the only difference between them and these is that master can't come along with this stick and run it through <laughs> the picture when you're Thank goodness yeah <laughs> that would be a bit of a heartbreak. Yeah. Well, they're beautiful. I mean, the other thing, you know, you're saying an artist only has a few themes that they're, you know, always dealing with. And I find that one of the other themes in your work that goes all the way through it is this idea of the fleeting nature of life. People are here and then they're gone, you know, without wanting to be a downer here. But, but death is, you know, death and the fleeting nature of human life is another theme in your work. And it makes me wonder about how you read these new paintings in relation to that because this is this is where we're going you know we're we're stardust we're golden you know we're on our way there we already are it how do you think about well, these paintings? I, I think you know not to be too poetic but we are light mm -hmm. and this starlight that we're looking at is not starlight today it's it's historical light mm -hmm. Like it has already taken place. And I think, you know, even our brief time on earth, like once you leave your mortal coil, mm -hmm. you still exist in this kind of half-life of people's memories. Like it really takes you right. decades to die. Like you think of all your loved ones that have passed and how you hold them dear still. And yeah. you're reminded of them every day. So that their light is still shining. Mm 